2013 Porsche Cayenne diesel was delivered to San Diego where it sat on the dock wasting our time away for weeks. It couldn't clear customs until import carb emissions paperwork was completed. Thus, our Cayenne was named Otis after the Otis Redding song sitting on the dock of the bay. We ordered Otis with the purpose of exploring the roads less traveled after following Jan Kalmer's exploits in his diesel. We are not interested in rock climbing or mud hauling, preferring to explore nature's wonders and time speed distance rally. Our journeys on off-road trails in western USA and Canada include the BDRs, Big Bend, Applegate Lolo, and Magruda Trails. We have entered long distance TSD rallies like the 5,000 plus mile Winter Alcan 5000. Ice racing on the Yukon River and standing on the frozen Arctic Ocean were priceless. Otis is a diesel order with air suspension and equipped for off-road. Creature comforts include 18-way adjustable heated seats. We added body protection like skid plates, push bar, rock sliders, interior roll bar and fence, and Expel wrap to the stock configuration. 550 plus mile range and Porsche handling complete a fun package. We travel with recovery gear, including a come up winch and max tracks running KO2s and studded Huckapalita winter tires. Currently, Otis has traveled 121,000 miles, mostly on trails outside of those pesky yellow and white lines. Looking forward to future adventures with the American Outback family, renewing friendships and exploring the trails less traveled. I'm going to tell you about the Overkill Camper that we rented to attend the American Outback Get Together. These rugged little off-road beauties are the camper version of a Swiss Army knife. The features include a pantry with Zarge's cases, prep tray cabinet, and a pass-through into the interior, a sink with hot and cold water, cook partner stove, and another prep area in the pull-out kitchen. There's a 97 quart Snowmaster fridge freezer, 285 watts of solar and 300 amps of battle-borne lithium ion batteries that are available. An RB queen size bed when the bump out is extended, but you can also stealth camp by not extending the bump out. The normal electrical digital systems and the heater provide all the comforts of home. The overkill with the 360 degree lock and roll hitch tracks like a bloodhound and off-road has the capability of a mountain goat. Moab Schaefer switchbacks and basin described on the Desert Solitude webpage as a Jeep trail were no problems for Otis or the overkill. On our return trip home, we spent the night at the Spring Canyon Point Trail, off-road 30 miles from Highway 191. It was an adventure driving to a bluff overlooking the Green River and heart-stopping when a windstorm broke out during the night. We retracted the bump out to stabilize the trailer and went to sleep confident the trailer was safe. We live by the ethos, it's the journey, not the destination that is important. And the Overkill Camper and the American Outback family have enhanced this philosophy. This is a 2015 Chevrolet Tahoe. It's built as a police pursuit vehicle. This one is a little more on the special side where it has a widened track and a two inch lift from the factory. It has uh, the 5.3 liter V8 six speed automatic transmission, a two speed transfer case, all wheel drive automatic and a rear locker. It also comes with a, a high output alternator that creates and distributes power to two batteries. There's a house battery and then a cranking battery on the 285-70R17 general grabbers and they're wrapped around black rhino bar stow rims. While this has a lot of modifications, probably the most popular one is the drawer insert that's in the back of the Rhino that accommodates a Domatec sink and stove unit and the sink is serviced by a nine gallon water tank that's underneath the dog deck in the middle part of the Rhino and then the gas comes off of a five pound LP gas tank that I have on the Wilco swing arm that's in the back of the rig. The insert also has a pantry and another drawer that holds all of our mess kits that way and then it has a 40 liter ice coat fridge. Up top is a Rhino Rack, it's their Pioneer platform. The build and installation of the drawer system insert uh, also created a space 
in the passenger compartment where I built a dog deck. We travel with two golden retrievers and that's where they ride. And then below the dog deck is the nine gallon water tank for the sink that way. And then the aft portion of the drawer system insert also provides storage for us. This trailer was built by Okie Built. I've had it for about five years. It's all steel construction and has a lock and roll trailer hitch and the suspension is made by Timbrin. I have added a lift for the rooftop tent, the four 100 pound gas struts on each corner with the tent and I use two ratcheting winches to lower the tent for when we are traveling. The tent is a CVT Denali that has a full annex. I also have a Smitty Built awning mounted on the trailer. The trailer has a 12 volt power system it consists of two 100 amp hour deep cycle AGM batteries, a Renogy 50 amp DC to DC charger with built-in MPPT solar controller. We use it for charging devices and will eventually be used for refrigerator power. When we are in camp for an extended period of time, I use a 100 watt suitcase solar panel for charging the batteries. I'm John Vandergrift, and this is my 2012 Jeep JK Wrangler Rubicon two-door. I bought it used in 2016, and I've benefited from the prior owner who had already done most of the suspension work before I bought it. I live in the Puget Sound region, so my Jeep is set up more to wheel in the terrain of the tight trees, rocks, deep snow, and mountains we have, but I've found it also works pretty well for me in other places I've wheeled, such as the High Sierras, Arizona, Southern Utah, and in the Rockies of Colorado. I like to think that overall it's a pretty well-rounded rig. Needless to say, it has a lot of modifications that are more oriented to the wheeling I do than simply straight overlanding, and that's at the sacrifice of some highway comfort. But I think the single most fun thing is the 8-inch stretched wheelbase and coilover rear suspension. Otherwise, the powertrain is a bone stock 3.6 liter engine for reliability. And I like the standard 6-speed transmission with the stock 4 to 1 Rubicon transfer case. This has worked very well for me, and the 513 axle gears work very well with my 37-inch pit bulls on beadlock wheels. Also, I really like the microphone mount for my communications. I bent some 16-gauge sheet metal patterned from the Cobra CB mount that I modified to hold two microphones, so now I can easily have both my CB and GMRS microphones handy for use at the same time. Our Jeep is a 2013 JKU Sport with 373 gearing and limited slip differential ordered as the max tow package. We already knew from previously owned Jeeps that we wanted a low center of gravity build type and it needed to work as a multi-use vehicle for us too. The Jeep has a 2 inch lift and 35 inch tires gaining a bit of room for flexing using the Bushwhacker standard with pocket flare. The Quadratech house brand wheels push the tires out about an inch further than stock, keeping the tires tucked under the flare edge. The shocks are now the Rancho RS9000 XL adjustable shock. On the front end we have an AV premium front bumper with a Smitty Belt X20 winch and synthetic line. The rear has a Smitty Belt SRC carbine bumper and the side has the Mopar rails from a Jeep Rubicon edition. All are bedlined, and behind the rail we also bedlined for extra protection. In the hitch we have a Smitty Belt Beaver Step, which is also a rated right tow point for recovery as well as protecting the spare tire from underneath. The hood is a Top Fire Fury fiberglass hood. While it has functional venting, the hood's best function has been to divert rocks away from the windshield. We switched over from CB to Midland GMRS last year, as many events have also been changing and requiring GMRS instead of CBs now. The exterior lighting for the headlights, parking lights, fogs, and tail are all JW speaker. And we also have a set of LED cubes in the rear bumper for trail use. On the inside, we updated all the interior lighting to red LED. 
we have an additional 12 volt power outlet for the back seat passengers under the windows switches on the center console and for better views when no one is in the back we unhook the return spring behind the headrest this allows them to simply stay folded to the rear until needed it keeps them fully functional and hooked into place once upright the carpet has all been replaced by bed lining all it requires is a quick vacuum or rinse and the rear cargo area is secured with a Tuffy 299 security enclosure which allows us to pack more stuff back there with the top off and have more room to pack above it if we need to as well. The tailgate has a Best Stop Rough Rider bag on it. We carry our first aid supplies and some smaller emergency items in there too. This is a 2012 Jeep Wrangler Sport. It's on a two and a half inch JKS lift with 35 inch General Grabber AT3 tires on it. it. Has a manual JKS sway bar disconnect up front. Since it's a Sport, it does have a Dana 30 front axle which has been sleeved and has upgraded ball joints and chromoly axle shafts mostly from Synergy. Has a set of rock sliders on it and some Rampage bumpers uh, with swing away tire carrier in the rear with some auxiliary lighting there too. Has a rugged ridge high and low mount snorkel on it. The low mount is up there right now. Also has a Super Chips flash pack installed in it. So it should be getting somewhere around 300 horsepower now. This Jeep's a lot of fun to drive. Actually still has the original 373 gearing in it. We've left it that way for fuel economy and overland travel and we've been really happy with it with the increased horsepower we get out of the cold air intake and Super Chips programming. Up top, we have the Yakima Quick Disconnect uh, roof rack system, which isn't on there today. We brought this rig specifically out to try it out on Elephant Hill and Bobby's Hole, and we were very happy with it, even with the 373 gearing in it. It's a lot of fun to drive. This is our 2018 Ram Power Wagon, as you can see from the logo on the door here. It's a rental rig from our company Element Outdoors out of Grand Junction, Colorado. We supply overland rentals and camper vans, things like that, to adventure travelers in Western Slope, of Colorado. And Moab area. This truck's great. Uh, we love the power wagon. It's got plenty of space. It's a popular rig for adventure support and mountain bike travel, as well as bigger families on overland adventures. It does have the 6.4 liter Hemi in it, which everybody loves. Uh, since it's a power wagon, it comes with front and rear locking differentials and sway bar disconnect. It does have an inch and a half Theron leveling kit with Fox shocks on it as well. Um, that allows us to fit a 37 inch uh, Falcon Wild Peak tire under it with the race line wheel. It looks really sharp back of the bed here we've got a custom rack that we build to sell out of our shop in Grand Junction and then on top of the rack there we have a 23-0 breezeway tent this one's a 72 inch tent so it can fit four people in there my wife and I and our kids can all go out and we can all fit in this tent also on the rack there we've got a place to mount some roto packs and some traction boards and we've got some storage boxes coming for the front of that rack space too one reason we built this rack custom is we wanted something that would fit the tonneau cover so our tonneau cover rolls up with the rack for some dust free storage in the bed the interior here, we love the fold down seat in the back of the power wagon. Uh, folds down to make a nice flat platform, so we have some auxiliary power back there to run a fridge whenever we've got the family out. That's this 2018 Ram Power Wagon. It's a fun build. My adventure rig is a 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited. My Jeep sits on a four and a half inch suspension lift consisting of rock crawler springs and metal cloak control arms. Other suspension mods include Yeti XD tie rod and Yeti XD drag link with attenuator, super lift track bars, and PSC hydro assist steering. And she's sitting pretty on 37 inch Cooper STT Pro tires. Underneath the Jeep is a Flowmaster exhaust, metal cloak drive shafts, chrome molly axle shafts wrapped in trust Dana 44 differentials with 513 gears. And for when things get really crazy, I've got full Rubicon Express steel skid plates and a 12,000 pound winch. Under the hood she's got an ARB dual air compressor, S-Pod lighting and accessory controller, and an Optima yellow top battery. In the cockpit I run mapping and navigation apps on an iPad Air tablet mounted in a life-proof rugged docking station and ram mounts. For radio comms I have CB ICOM ID 5100 ham radio and a Midland Micromobile GMRS radio. As for overlanding mods, I run a DIY rooftop tent mounted to a Frontrunner Slimline 2 roof rack 
And in the back of the Jeep I have a Iron Man 4x4 fridge and fridge slide and an Overland Vehicle Systems drawer. Hi, I'm Brian. My wife Nicole and I live outside Phoenix, Arizona. We just took delivery of a 2021 Ford F-150 Tremor. Overall, this truck slots between an FX4 and the Raptor. I pick up about 3,000 pounds towing capacity and about 600 pounds payload over the Raptor. Performance-wise, I would say this truck is maybe 85% of a Raptor, but I feel that the added tow and payload capability is a fair trade-off for us. Because the vehicle is brand new, it is entirely stock. We are adding a GMRS radio, bed liner, and soft topper. I like the idea of having an enclosed truck bed for sleeping and storage, but within a few minutes, I can fold the topper and convert the truck back to a regular bed. After exploring the trails, we learned that the stock 33-inch General Grabbers held onto gravel a little bit longer than we felt they should have. There's no need to replace a brand new tire, so we'll likely put KO2s on them when we do. I have them on my 4Runner, and I never had that issue. For me, this truck is a perfect blend between overland capability and daily use. The truck's tech makes it one of the most comfortable rides I've ever had. We give up a bit on the trail because of the overall size, but I felt that it did a pretty darn good job on some of the moderately technical tracks we were on in Utah. Put it out in the highway between trailheads and this beast can flat out haul. It is super quick, 400 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque, gets it up to speed and then some in a blink of an eye. I gotta watch out for speeding tickets. This is the third time we have rented a pin drop, and the first time we weren't boondocking. We keep coming back because the queen bed is super comfortable and the kitchen is just amazing. The pin drop has managed to keep us warm when it's cold and cool when it's warm. There is ample storage inside with thoughtful touches, like LED reading lights, in addition to the ambient cabin and cabinet lighting. The snake lights are an exterior light that come on when you open the doors that allow you to see what's on the ground for those middle of the night potty runs. And the U-shaped galley is second to none and has more counter space than many full-size RVs while still being easy to tow down the road to more remote sites. It's powered by solar and keeps power use low by way of LED lighting and thoughtful things like using a hand pump for the onboard water in the kitchen. While it's capable of supporting an RTT on the custom roof spans, we have never tried this feature. Instead, we've set up the kids in a ground tent that opens onto the porch created by an ARB awning. We have loved working with Tim and Ruth Ellen Alinsky of Pendrop and highly recommend them for your next adventure. I get to talk about my Jeep? Cool. This is a 2012 Jeep Wrangler Sport two-door, very basic, manual door locks, manual windows, manual six-speed transmission, and the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 motor. The single most important thing that I added to the little Jeep is the 63-quart ARB fridge. I have cold beer at every campsite. It keeps meat and vegetables fresh, just like the fridge at home. Underneath, it's got 410 gears, which was a huge change from the factory 321s. It's got Yukon air lockers in both the front and rear differentials, and it's got a um, Viair compressor under the hood to activate those air lockers and, of course, take care of the tires as well. It's got stronger axle shafts, bigger C's, bigger uh, bigger U joints, all that good stuff, and custom drive shafts front and rear. The 10K MGO winch has gotten the Jeep out of some precarious situations I've been silly enough to drive into. Suspension is a two and a half inch TerraFlex, and the rear springs are from their four door version. That gives them a little bit more carrying capacity. It does stiffen up the ride quite a bit when the Jeep is unloaded, but it works great with either the trailer or a heavy load in the back. Uh, Fox shocks have been very, very good, trouble free. 
I'm currently using the 17 inch factory aluminum wheels and Cooper ST Max tires in a size that is about a 33 by 10. That stays nicely tucked up underneath the fenders which is important to me. Also I have some mud flaps on the back by TerraFlex and that keeps the state patrol happy up here in Washington. They stopped and talked to me about my lack of mud flaps once. Interesting. Got a spare tire carrier on the back by TerraFlex. Very strong, very stout, not a problem. I augmented the factory headlights with a set of Vision X driving lights. Been very helpful. And normally the little two-door Jeep works fine for me. Uh, my purposes, it's just peachy. I don't usually travel with a big crowd or anything, so no, no problem there. I came across a good deal on a used trailer, a jack wagon trailer, a few years ago. It's just a simple four foot wide, two foot deep, six foot long aluminum box on a nice steel frame with a timber and suspension and trailer brakes. Works great. 17 inches of ground clearance and it tows behind my Jeep very, very nicely either on or off pavement.